the Honda Rubicon. It's been called the king of the ATVs and the most versatile ATV anywhere. And its automatic transmission is being heralded as nothing short of revolutionary. Let's find out why. Welcome to this program on the TRX 500 FA Hondamatic Transmission. After viewing this program, you'll be able to describe how the Hondamatic Transmission functions and list the steps to follow when troubleshooting two of the most common complaints. First, let's begin with an overview of this fully automatic, computer-controlled, continuously variable automatic transmission. The new automatic transmission is compact, quiet, and sealed to help resist the harmful effects of dirt and water in challenging terrain. First, let's examine the components of the automatic transmission, starting with the pump side swashplate, hydraulic pump side of the cylinder body, distributor valves, hydraulic motor side of the cylinder body, motor side swash plate, output shaft, shift actuator and control motor. The automatic transmission consists of two primary sections. The pump side is a hydraulic pump that converts mechanical energy from the engine into hydraulic pressure reaching peaks of nearly 5,000 psi. The motor side is a hydraulic motor that converts the hydraulic pressure back into mechanical energy which rotates the output shaft through the sub transmission and then to the drive wheels. Let's take a closer look at this principle in action. Here we have a simple piston connected to another piston with hydraulic lines. A reservoir provides a constant supply of hydraulic fluid to the system. When the pump piston is pushed mechanically, the hydraulic fluid is forced to the motor cylinder side and the motor piston is pushed outward. This is similar to the action that occurs when you squeeze the hydraulic brake lever. The master cylinder piston forces hydraulic pressure through the line, forcing the brake caliper piston against the brake pads. This is the basic principle behind the Hondamatic transmission. It's also important to note that the same oil that lubricates the engine is used as hydraulic fluid by the automatic transmission. The engine oil sump acts as an oil reservoir to ensure an adequate supply of oil for the low pressure circuit. A key benefit of the automatic transmission is its ability to provide engine compression braking. When accelerating, the engine's crankshaft drives the clutch, which in turn drives the hydraulic pump swash plate. Hydraulic pressure from the pump drives the hydraulic motor, which rotates the output shaft, the sub-transmission, and finally the drive wheels. During compression braking, power flow is reversed. The ATV wheels drive the motor side pistons as a pump, and then the pump side pistons act as a hydraulic motor that drives against the engine using compression to provide braking force. The Rubicon features an electronic control module, or ECM, to provide the optimum drive ratio for a wide range of conditions and optimal engine braking. The system uses electronic sensors, a multi-mode computer map, and a control motor to adjust the angle of the motor side swash plate. With this system, the rider can choose between three modes of transmission operation. The first two are fully automatic modes, which provide smooth, seamless power delivery through the entire RPM range. The D1 mode selects the shift points according to engine horsepower. The D2 mode selects shift points based on torque and is better suited for limited traction situations to prevent unwanted wheel spin. The third mode, Electronic Shift Program, or ESP, allows the rider to select predetermined drive ratios with the ESP thumb switches. Low range, drive, reverse, and neutral are selected mechanically with a shift lever. They are not incorporated into the automatic transmission. They are housed separately in a conventional sub-transmission. Next, 
Let's take a look at two common complaints and how to troubleshoot them. If a customer says, the engine feels like it starts off in high gear, or if there's a problem with poor shifting, abnormal noises or surging, you should check the oil pressure. A problem with oil pressure can create a lack of oil flow to the automatic transmission, which can cause these symptoms. First, verify 1040 weight oil is used. Do this by checking with the customer, or change the oil yourself. Remember, the same oil used to lubricate the engine is used as hydraulic fluid in the automatic transmission. So problems with the oil or oil pressure can impact the engine as well as the performance of the transmission. Once you've verified the correct oil is being used, you need to properly check the oil level and the oil pressure. Start by running the engine for at least five minutes. This five minute time frame gives the oil time to warm up and circulate through the engine and transmission giving you an accurate reading. After allowing the engine to idle for five minutes, shut it off. Check the oil level. It's correct. Remove the engine oil pressure check bolt and attach the oil pressure gauge. Be sure your gauge is connected to the correct port. Restart the engine and check the pressure at two different RPMs. First, check the pressure at 1400 RPM. The pressure should read above 150 kPa or 22 psi. You will likely see a reading in the 207 to 276 kPa or 30 to 40 psi range if the system is functioning correctly. As you can see, it's low. Now, check the pressure at 5,000 RPM. It should read above 800 kPa, or 116 PSI. You will likely see a reading in the 862 to 965 kPa, 125 to 140 PSI range. This reading is low, too. Refer to the TRX 500 FA Rubicon Service Manual for detailed information. If the oil pressure is too low or too high, again, make sure 1040 weight oil is being used. Incorrect oil viscosity could result in an inaccurate reading. If the proper oil is being used and the pressure is not within spec, then the problem is most likely the oil pump internal relief valve, which is located in the oil pump. To get to this valve, remove the engine and separate the crankcases. Then, remove the five gold-colored bolts that secure the oil pump. Remove the oil pump body. Remove the three silver-colored bolts to separate the oil pump. Inspect the oil pump internal relief valve. Here's the problem. This relief valve is stuck. Unlike this one that works properly. So we need to replace the oil pump. Start by coating the new O-rings with oil. Install them into the proper grooves in the front crankcase. Install the new oil pump into the front crankcase and tighten the five gold-colored bolts securely. Refer to the TRX 500 FA Rubicon service manual for detailed information. If a customer says, the Rubicon won't shift in the ESP mode and the meter is flashing, then you need to retrieve and interpret the problem codes. 
First, it's important to understand this is all part of a self-diagnostic function that's built into the Honda Medic Transmissions ECM. The ECM is located under the rear fender on top of the toolbox. By constantly monitoring the system, the ECM can detect problems as soon as they occur. And when a problem is detected, several things happen. First, the shift control system goes into a fail-safe mode, and it will no longer shift. Then the gear position indicator begins flashing one line containing two dashes. And it's important to note that whenever a problem code is generated, it can trigger the rev limiter in reverse. The ECM is capable of storing nine problem codes, but it only flashes two codes at a time. The most recent code flashes first, followed by any code recorded earlier. To retrieve problem codes, start by selecting neutral, press and hold down both the shift buttons, then turn the key on. Release both buttons, then press and hold them again for a couple of seconds until the display changes. Then release the buttons and the display will soon start flashing the code. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's problem code number six. Turn the key off. When you check the service manual, you'll find that problem code number six is the swashplate angle sensor. Here's a tip. The transmission unit may be stuck at the end of its travel due to a faulty angle sensor. To release the transmission, use a small screwdriver. To check the swashplate angle sensor, start by removing the left engine side cover and disconnect the angle sensor 3-pin connector. As always, check for loose or corroded connectors and be sure to check the pin fit. Measure the input voltage between the yellow-red and blue-green wire terminals of the wire harness side of the angle sensor connector with the ignition switch on. The spec in the service manual is 4.7 to 5.3 volts DC. This reading is within spec. Now measure the sensor resistance at the angle sensor. The spec is 1.6 to 2.4 kilo ohms. This is out of spec, so we need to replace the angle sensor. Before removing the angle sensor, clean the area around the sensor base with compressed air. You can remove the exhaust pipe if you want, but it is not necessary if you use a shortened 4 millimeter Allen wrench. Next, remove the two bolts, the washers, and the angle sensor from the crankcase. Clean the sensor shaft, sensor joint, and crankcase base cavity. Verify the new angle sensor works properly by checking the resistance between the yellow-blue and blue-green terminals and making sure it varies as you turn the sensor shaft. Here's a tip. The sensor will turn about one quarter turn before the resistance starts to change. That's the amount of preload it has when installed. The resistance changes smoothly and is within the spec listed in the service manual. Be sure to install a new O-ring with a new angle sensor. Align the tabs of the sensor with the flat of the sensor joint and place the angle sensor into the crankcase in the proper position. The angle sensor must be preloaded to work properly. Preload it by turning the sensor clockwise to align the bolt holes in the sensor body and crankcase. After completing the repair, you must erase the problem codes from the ECM and then initialize the system. To erase any codes, go through the code retrieval process and make sure the problem code is displayed on the gear position indicator. Then push the up and down shift button simultaneously for at least three seconds. When the codes have been erased, the system will flash an erasure confirmation pattern that consists of one long two-second flash, 
followed by three seconds off, then two seconds on again. Then turn the key off and repeat the process to make sure you've erased all the codes. This is important because the system can store up to nine individual problem codes, yet it can only display two at a time. You must initialize the ECM whenever you replace the ECM, throttle sensor or angle sensor, or whenever you replace, disconnect or adjust the throttle cable. To initialize the Rubicon, start by running the engine for at least 30 seconds in neutral. While in D1, move the gear shift lever to the D position. Ride slowly for at least five feet to verify the transmission has the proper amount of oil in it. Move the shift lever back to neutral and turn the engine off. While pushing both the up and down ESP buttons, turn the ignition switch on and release the buttons. Then press the up shift button, then down, and then up again. At this point, the gear position indicator should show a dashed line in the display. Then move the throttle lever from its fully closed position to fully open, and then fully closed again. You should hear the control motor operate three times. Keep in mind, you must complete this sequence within 10 seconds of receiving the dashed line on the gear position indicator. If you do not, it will not initialize. When the initialization is successful, the gear position indicator changes from a dashed line to a constant N. If the initialization were to fail, you would still see a dashed line. If the display starts flashing, it diagnosed another error. Retrieve the problem codes and troubleshoot based on that code. If it's the same angle sensor code, check for the proper angle sensor installation and connections. That concludes this program on the TRX500FA Hondomatic Transmission, the most innovative transmission ever used in an all-terrain vehicle.